So I'm privileged enough to have Hannah Silito here today, uh, Dragon's Den winner and brand extraordinaire. Um, Hannah, would you like to tell us a little bit around kind of your backstory? You know, how did you imagine as a child? What, what were your childhood ambitions? That's a very grand introduction there, James. <laughs> I like it though, I like it. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I guess I've always, always had that entrepreneurial mindset. Very fortunate that both parents um, are very entrepreneurial themselves, have run their own businesses for years. My father was in events and marketing and he actually created the Pepsi challenge, which you might remember from the 90s, where we tried Pepsi, we tried Coke, we decided which we preferred. And that was his concept. So I was kind of brought up around that whole idea of working for yourself, having ambition, really going out there and being driven. And my mother owned a climbing and mountaineering shop. So again, you know, I sat there, I remember as a child watching these presentations by Chris Bonington and people who climbed Everest and sitting there in awe of what's possible in the world. And I guess that really gave me this insight into not necessarily having to stick to a nine to five, not having to work for anybody else. And it came to work experience at school and we were all asked where we'd like to work and our ideal kind of profession. And I decided I wanted to be a DJ. That was my thing. I love music. I love talking. And so, yeah, I wanted to present a radio show. And I remember my careers advisor suggesting that perhaps I'd like to work in an office or maybe I would like to consider a job as a secretary. <laughs> no, that's not really the route that I want to go down. I really had this kind of desire to yeah, communicate with people and enjoy my job and play music. So I reached out to local radio stations myself and got a work experience placement, which I thought was fantastic, getting to meet bands like Oasis back in the 90s. You know, this was great. This was what I wanted to do. And I pursued that career for 15 years. I was a presenter, broadcaster, club DJ, and absolutely loved it. And I think it was always that ability to work flexibly, to work for myself, to not do necessarily long hours, but just really focused, dedicated, creative hours. And I just had such a great time. And then the media industry kind of changed quite dramatically. And again, I was like, I want to be my own boss. I want to play this game under my own rules. I don't want to have to conform and to kind of be regulated to having a set number of holidays a year. My big thing was travel throughout my 20s. So I wanted a job that would let me travel and let me go and see the world. And I tried various different businesses, all with varying success. And I think that's the great thing about the entrepreneurial mindset that you can take it and you can learn these basic skills of maybe designing a website and marketing that and understanding social media, but actually apply it to so many different things. So I started by selling electric scooters. That was one of my projects. I then started importing furniture and began selling quite iconic retro furniture. And then eventually my story as it is now came about seven years ago when I went through quite a big dramatic health transformation. And I'd struggled with skin conditions ever since I was a teenager and went through a process of changing my diet and lifestyle in order to heal psoriasis and eczema and these quite serious skin conditions that my doctor had offered me a chemotherapy treatment for. And this was something I was passionate about sharing with the world. So all the businesses that had come before that were enjoyable. They gave me the flexibility and freedom to travel and do all these things that I wanted to do. But there was never really a passion and a purpose behind them. Sure, the furniture was pretty. The electric scooters were fun. DJing was a great job. But there wasn't anything kind of personal. Whereas once I'd learned how to heal my body and heal my skin, this was something that I wanted to share with everybody. And actually it wasn't really considered in my mind as a business from the beginning. I wrote a book because I really wanted to share my experience and enjoyed the process of writing and sharing that in an online blog and kind of translated that into a book, which then very quickly became a bestseller, which in itself was amazing. And from that came a range of natural skincare products because people kept saying to me, you're making all these changes on the inside. Are you still using the steroid treatment the coal tar, the emollients the doctors prescribed. And the answer was no, you know, I've switched to using natural skincare products, coconut oil and um, tea tree oil, eucalyptus oil. And I worked with a local naturopath and aromatherapist and we made this really small kitchen table range. And it was literally me and her working together. She would make batches of 20 products for me. I would pack them up using, you know, corrugated paper and making it all look very homemade pop it into a little box. And at the end of the week, I used to cart huge Ikea bags up to my post office. And bearing in mind, I live in a small Derbyshire village. So they used to roll their eyes when I'd turn up. 
you know, the whole post office would have to queue behind me for a good hour whilst we shipped these packages out. But because of where I live, it was impossible to get any large delivery courier trucks down. And so this was the way I had to run it. And so my ambition was always to grow this bigger. And I thought, if I'm going to get to do this for the rest of my life, for me, it has to pay the bill. Um, well, that's certainly been like a fascinating journey and, and the way you've been. And there's quite a few bits there. It sounds like from your, you know, your careers that you, you may have applied to help with the skincare brand. So I really want to hear about that in a second. But first, I think um, the Dragon's Den, I know, is the question that's going to be on everyone's lips. So tell us more about that experience and, and, and what that did for your business. You know, I knew that in growing a business, in taking this to the next level, I had to have outside input. And I think when you work for yourself, when you are an entrepreneur, you can get quite self-absorbed and, and you're sort of focused in your kind of direct line of thinking. But to have that outside input from people who have got a wealth of experience was just such an amazing opportunity. And it was friends who suggested, you know, you should apply to be on the show. And the first year I applied, I actually went for the audition, but ended up getting turned down. And I was massively disappointed at the time, but I just thought, you know, it wasn't the right time. I'll persevere. And the second year, they actually got in touch with me and they'd watched the business grow via Instagram. And they were really excited to offer me a second audition. So I went for the audition. That was it. They said, yep, we're going to put you through to speak to the five dragons. And it was this kind of overwhelming feeling of thinking this could really be it because now I get to pitch the idea to five amazing investors. I also get to you know, expose the brand to such a massive audience, 3 million viewers on the BBC. And I thought this is going to be a lot more than just, you know, a friend of mine up the road packaging little natural skincare. And, and what happened, Hannah, when you had, you know, so you said 3 million people saw your brand overnight. What happened that weekend? It we kind of prepared ourselves for it to go crazy. We knew it was going to be busy, but I don't think I've ever experienced anything like it. So, for example, I get a little ping on my website when we get an order in. And the phone literally did not stop pinging because it just went absolutely insane. From the moment you appear on the screen, people must just start Googling the brand. And so I got this influx of, you know, a new Instagram audience. Obviously, everybody's adding you. Twitter's going crazy. And I remember at first I had in my head that I was going to have this big Dragon's Den party and invite all my friends and family. And then colleagues had said, you might be better off just concentrating on work that night because I think it's going to be a little bit busy. And I'm so pleased that that was the route I took because the orders come in was amazing. Thankfully, at that moment, we'd already moved across to having some form of fulfillment because I could not have parceled this up and carried it to my local post office. And, and Hannah, you're one of the, the few people I think to have an offer from all five dragons. What did that feel like at the time? You know, I would have been absolutely delighted with one dragon offering me investment. That was my mission. And I had in my head that I would love Deborah or Tej because they've both got experience in my industry. And so Deborah was the first dragon to offer. And as soon as she offered, and actually she she wanted more of the company that and I'd said I was said I was willing to give away, but it was still within the kind of time mm -hmm. within the, within the limits that I put on it. As soon as she'd offered, I was just delighted to have that option. And I thought, now I can go home and say, I had the option of a dragon. And that was all I wanted. We we never practiced for all five dragons offering. I sat with my accountant, I sat with friends, we practiced the pitch, and we'd practice what if this, what if that. At no point had I had I even contemplated the scenario of being faced with that, that must have been quite a shock, Hannah, but I mean, I guess it's a huge testament you know, to the brand and, and your presentation skills. You mentioned there before about having, um, you know, I know you started at a kitchen table in your cottage, taking it to the post office. How has that journey evolved uh, from, you know, what was uh, the, the, the way we've started as well, you know, having to take it in a bag to the post office and having them roll your eyes at the amount you're trying to take in, um, to where you are now, which is, you know, shipping thousands and thousands of products. Out. I mean, it was already getting busy and getting to the point where, you know, the trips to the post office were more frequent, but I knew at some stage that my time couldn't be spent doing that. You know, taping up boxes is so much more time consuming than you would even imagine. And I just thought, I, I can't, this isn't a part of the business that is using my time productively. So we already knew that we needed to outsource it. Having that opportunity to do that just has taken away such a kind of massive, um, a massive tie in so many ways. You know, for a start, my dining room, I didn't have a dining room anymore. It was boxes, floor to ceiling. It was products. It was shelves stacked with, you know, with everything. And so... 
now to be in a situation where we've upscaled to the point where obviously you guys are handling all of that. I, I can literally have as much or as little product in my home as I choose. And it doesn't feel like my house is, um, you know, is a warehouse space, which is how it was beginning to feel. So that in itself is amazing. That's that. I just want to circle back, Hannah, you started off, you know, talking about your previous careers in media and radio. What things did you learn in those kind of businesses that you've now applied to this business and, and as, what has it taught you in those previous careers? So I think a big part of it is just communication, you know, the opportunity to be able to speak to people, to be able to, radio definitely is just one of those mediums where you communicate on this very different level. And I think being able to share my story really confidently, being able to speak about my personal experience, especially when it comes to skin conditions, which are so personal for so many people, being able to relate to people on an emotional level and understand the massive mental health implications that go behind living with something so visible. So when you're talking about eczema, you know, this can affect people to the point where they don't want to leave the house or have a social life, or we see it as a physically painful skin condition, but actually the emotional aspects are absolutely there. And I think learning that method of communication, being able to say to someone, I'm going to make time for you. This is not a five or 10 minute doctor consultation where I'm going to hurriedly prescribe you know from a list of products that I think might alleviate symptoms for a short period of time I'm going to listen to you understand exactly what it is you're going through share my own experience and then together we're going to come up with a solution I think that is the part that I feel offers my clients that real kind of personal service and when you're able to do that on a platform like Instagram with 50,000 followers and to reach out to those people it's incredibly powerful I mean it's quite scary and yeah, daunting at times as well that's, but, that's yeah. a, you know a huge number of people and it's fantastic that you can use that expertise you've got you know to help so many and you said now you've obviously not got your house full of boxes and you've got some more time back you're not having to deal with the kind of physical side of fulfillment what what does that allow you to do more of that that's really helped? I mean, what what is the kind of what is it you now have the time to do that's caused such a success for your company? I mean, a major part of it for me is the new product development. You know, I didn't have any idea when I launched the brand. We launched with 10 products, which in itself was a lot to launch a brand with. I didn't have any idea how much expectation is put on you by retailers and consumers, really, about expanding your range. And I had customers constantly saying, but which sunscreen do I need? Which shower gel do I need? Okay, I'm using your face cream, but do you have a serum? And all of a sudden I was faced with all these requests from people saying, could you add this? Could you add that? And you think, yeah, I can, but you've no idea how long it takes just to come up with one product. You know, it's a long process. The ingredients, the, you know, working, working out to ensure that it's an effective product for people, the packaging, the branding, the look, um, getting regulations through on what needs to be on labels, all these things that, you know, you really don't consider, I guess, when you buy a product, how much goes into it. And, and how many products you started with? You said you started with 10. How many products are in the, the Hannah Solito range now? So we've got 17 now. And, you know, the company is only really 18 months old, especially, you know, since since the Dragons um, episode. Wow. And and so it's a lot to keep adding. And this year we've got another six products planned by the end of the year. And, you know, we keep adding and adding. And every time we do, the new products prove super popular. So to have you guys organizing the fulfillment for me, that means I can go and visit new suppliers, discuss new products, you know, look at active ingredients, work out what the next big thing is to help people with skin conditions, it means that I'm spending my time much more productively than queuing at the post office for two hours to <laughs> yes. upset them That's with great. idea bags. Um, and other than the, the D question, uh, which you've already asked, I guess there's the, the C question around you know, COVID and how that's changed your business. Uh, I guess it's had very different facets, especially with so many different products. What, what's, what's been the kind of positives and negatives? I think of that at the start, you? like so many people, I panicked because I just thought, you know, unprecedented is the word that has obviously come up so many times. But you think, what is going to happen in the world? Also, are you guys going to be able to go into the warehouse? Can you still fulfill orders? You know, all these different kind of unknowns that, um, you know, left me thinking, where, where does the business go? What happens with this? And we just launched into retail as well at the time. And I'm thinking if all these health stores are going to close, you know, how is how is the customer going to access the product? And of course, the answer was online massively. And so rather than seeing a dip in orders, things just began to go crazy as people took more care of themselves. I found that lots of my customers had more time for self-care and investing in themselves, which was just amazing. So customers who perhaps before 
had gone down the medication route just because they were so busy with everyday lives, all of a sudden had an opportunity and breathing space to try something different. So demand increased, which was amazing in itself. And then to have the fulfillment service be able to cope with that demand and run smoothly, you know, to allow us to continue was just incredible because that would have been a real worry. You know, if I couldn't get the product to the customer, you're essentially left without a business. So for me, there have only been upsides in terms of the business. We have seen massive growth over the past year. And I think, like I say, people are taking their health so much more seriously, especially their internal health. We launched a probiotic earlier this year, and that has fast become our bestseller overnight. I think because people realize that, you know, immunity, our gut health is absolutely integral to our base level of well-being. And we are all taking a little bit more notice of that as we're trying to keep ourselves well. So for me, in terms of the business, it has just been nothing but positive, which has been fantastic. And, and, and one of the challenges I'm you know, certainly hearing from a lot of retailers generally is there's this, this big shift from physical store to online. How have you found that mix of physical to online? And do you have any advice for other up and coming brands about, you know, should they be focusing on the high street still? Or do you think it's, it's more and more online now? See, it's so difficult because we'd only just launched into the high street and it was amazing to have a company like Holland and Barrett on board with me because they've got a great reputation. They're well trusted by customers. So to be aligned with that is fantastic. And we had just started discussing other opportunities into other retail stores, but buyers don't really want to hear from new brands when they're in the middle of handling a crisis. So mm -hmm. my focus just went all the way online. We obviously started looking at Amazon and um, you know, being able to retail in more places than just my own website. But for me, retaining customers, holding on to them, nurturing them, having return customers, really having customers who are invested in the brand as much as I'm invested in my customer is super important to me. So I love the fact that customers come back to me time after time, my website time after time, to learn from my blog, to understand more about the foods they're eating as well as what they're putting on their skin. And I think that's what we've created is this social media enterprise and this website that draws customers back time and time again, because they can find their information, they can find the products, they can subscribe to monthly um, delivery if they want, you know, all these different things that are making their lives easier for them. And yeah, so for me, online is an absolute no brainer. The world was going that way anyway, but it just seems to have gone there at okay. a million miles an hour. That's a really important thing, I think, for people to take away from this, isn't it, around brands like yours, is it's not just about selling a product, which is a great product. It's that interaction with the company, the advice, the newsletter, you know, that's that's all part of it. And how have you built that up? Because I think, you know, that is something we're seeing a lot more and more now is people want to buy a story. They want to buy the reason why they don't just want to buy a product. I think it's so important for people as well. You know, they need to they need to understand a little bit more about the brand. And so for me, I very much put myself out there as the brand so they understand the person behind it. What I love, and actually I got a review just this morning from a customer who said, you know, as you can see, I'm a big fan and she'd photographed all the products that she'd received from me that month. And she said, I trust this lady with my skin. And I think it's about that. I share so much information for free. And I think if you have got a passion and something that you are um, you know, that you're super passionate about and that you're running that as your business, if you can share that with people and put as much information out there, don't feel nervous about not charging for that because I really believe that customers will love you for it and will absolutely invest in what you then ask them to invest in. So my customers know that new product development for me is not just going to a lab and saying, listen, guys, can you make some face cream that smells nice and looks pretty? They know that I'm going to take it much more seriously than that. And so... Yeah, building that brand, answering questions. You know, I sit on Instagram. Some days there are 200 messages because with 50,000 followers, many of whom have got skin conditions, there are a lot of questions. And so I end up in these conversations with people and I often get people messaging back saying, I can't believe you've personally taken time to reply. And I think, well, I don't know what you expect. Of course, I'm going to take time to reply because for me, you getting the answer is just as important as me sharing with you which products I believe are good for you. And if you're not gonna make the changes from within, no matter what you slather on your skin, it's pointless. So I want people to understand, you know, that the healing process is, um, is you know, multifaceted, I guess, and that actually 
if they make these changes to their diet, if they make these changes to their lifestyle and then apply the natural products, they are going to see the best results. That means I then have customers who in testimonials are talking about how great the range is, how great my advice is, because they are seeing results. And so for me, that human connection, that interaction with customers is such a massive part of what I do. Of course, I want the reviews to be positive. I want the customers to have a great experience, but more than anything, I want them to get better. I'm, I'm imagining there's a lot of people listening to this right now thinking, I'd love to be spending that time, you know, my customers building that kind of relationship, but there's just so much to do in my business. You know, how do I get the time? And and you, you mentioned that you, you know, working with scientists and the labs, you've got marketing specialists and other partners and you know, fulfillment advisors and things helping. How do you decide what to outsource you know, because it's, it's still very much your brand and your product. How do you decide what you're going to do and what you take um, help and specialist advice with? You know, it still makes me laugh when people say things like, could you ask your web designer to uh, do this? <laughs> like, I am the web designer. <laughs> or could you, you put me through to your press team? <laughs> That's me as well. I still, like, my my day-to-day -day job is very much my business. I am certainly not... And, you know, just kind of sitting on the uh, on the sidelines, just posting fancy pictures on Instagram. I work crazy long hours and still do. And I remember after Dragon's Den, breathing a sigh of relief and my accountant saying to me, this is when the hard work starts. This is not, you know, take your foot off the pedal. You've got the investment. This is when you are going to be working even harder and longer hours. And I kind of looked at him thinking, yeah, well, I've got a team behind me now. This would be fine. <laughs> Actually, everything he said was correct. I mean, I work, you know, longer and harder than ever before, but I absolutely love my job. So I'm super fortunate in that sense. There are, of course, bits that you can outsource. And I think this is where having fulfillment is invaluable because I don't need to worry about stock checks. I don't need to worry about whether the customer is going to get their order. I can glance at my database screen in the morning and I can see that, you know, what's gone out, what hasn't gone out, where the problems lie. And it just gives me that answer super quickly so that I can deal with it. But besides that, I am still the office admin. I am still responding to customers. I'm customer service first line of call. I also, you know, still design the website. I write the blog posts. I do everything. It always worries me a little bit to let go because each time I do, I have to trust somebody else to run my business as I would. And I can honestly say the only part of that that I'm happy with at the moment is fulfillment. Super happy. Haven't got any worries there. When I've let go of other bits, like asked other bits to guest contribute on the blog, it just doesn't feel like me. It doesn't sound like me. It kind of doesn't match with my ethos. And so I take back control and do it again. So I just pile more work on for myself. But I think if you love what you do, it doesn't matter that you work all those hours because it's a passion. So for me, I enjoy it. And and yeah, I would I would be doing this regardless of whether I think, or not it I was think my a lot of people kind of, as entrepreneurs, they, you know, they're very much attention to detail. I, I hear that a lot of people saying, I really want it done just right. And the giving to other people is kind of, you know, I kind of know I need to outsource something to other people, but actually that, that, that struggle of, I probably want it done just how I want it done. And that that is actually, you know, what makes the brand is, is that attention to detail. So I think that's a... Yeah, fantastic that you still make all the effort applied to all those different people and and when you have uh, these large peaks in demand where you know you get a lot of orders all of a sudden and, and things get busy how do you prepare either in the office with the telephones or what do you do in advance to make sure that's a success so i think the first thing that i always do is check that we've got the right number of stock products listed on the website because there is nothing worse than watching stock fly off the shelves when it doesn't exist in real time you know mm -hmm. um that that definitely creates a panic so for example, the new probiotic that we launched a few months ago, I knew it was going to be popular. We'd had a lot of people ask about it and we've kind of hiked it up on Instagram in advance and people knew when it was coming in. When it did, I still I still much under anticipated the response we would get. I think within two days, we'd sold out of a thousand bottles, which, you know, considering our kind of estimate orders at 50 to 100 a day, watching a thousand orders go out in a couple of days is a lot. And very pleased, I have to say, to be watching my dashboard and to see your guys picking and packing and seeing them all go out on time, every single one of them. And for me, you know, that individual customer doesn't care that you've had another 999 orders to fulfill that day. They are expecting their order to arrive the following day because you have promised them next day delivery. And I really think, especially in the world of Amazon, where customers are so used to things arriving on time every time, it's absolutely vital that, you know, you can trust that those orders are going to get to the customers, that the entire customer journey and experience 
matches what you put out there as a brand. And what, what do you do, Hannah? Something, you know, we see a lot across a lot of our clients in the fulfillment where we have campaigns and I think that customer expectation setting is you know, a really crucial part. What do you do when you ramped up to that product launching as far as communicating that to clients to make it a, such a success? I share a lot on Instagram. I mean, I share virtually my whole life on Instagram, but with that product, customers had followed me from start to finish in terms of the development, how excited I was about mm -hmm. what we were putting into the product. And when it went on sale, I was open and honest with customers, explained exactly how many bottles we were expecting into stock. And I said, it is gonna sell fast. Like, just trust me on this, it's gonna sell fast. We also offered the customers a chance for monthly subscription because it is a bottle that lasts a month. And so I said, if you don't wanna run out, you've got the option to, at a discounted price, sign up for a monthly subscription. So being completely open and transparent and updating customers every step of the way. So by day two, we were saying, look, we've already sold three quarters of the stock. You've just got, you know, the rest of today, this is going to be gone. Being able to be honest with them. And then I knew that because the brewing process takes six weeks, we were not going to have a new product available, a new probiotic available for them until um, the following month. So again, being honest and, you know, being open with them and explaining that and saying, once this stock is sold, that's it, it's gone, I think was absolutely important. And then again, setting expectations. If there was gonna be a delay, and we were so fortunate because you guys got every order out on time, but if there was gonna be a delay, writing that on the website, being honest and saying, look, you know, we've got a lot of orders to fulfill. And I think this is where being transparent about the fulfillment process, explaining to customers, you know, customers aren't stupid. They know it's not coming from my kitchen table anymore. They know that I'm not literally packing the products myself and taking them to the post office. So explaining that, you know, the fulfillment center are working really hard, they're packing everything, we're under COVID restrictions, the social distancing, there aren't as many staff in place. My customers have certainly warmed to our openness and honesty on that. And that I think is huge to be transparent. And as soon as you know, there are gonna be delays. If you're anticipating a courier being delayed, you know, if you are seeing problems going to a particular country because of COVID restrictions, telling customers up front saying, look, this is the potential problem, definitely works so much better than retrospectively saying, I'm really sorry, but I didn't know DPD had problems in France this week. And, you know, now we're seeing issues. Yeah. I think that sounds like some, some fantastic advice there, Hannah, and, and, and fantastic to hear the story and all the different parts of the journey that you've been on. Uh, just as one final part, thing, do you have you know one or two pieces of advice that you'd like to give fellow buddy entrepreneurs um, that you think they could benefit from? Always go for it. Go for it. Go for it. So if you are sat there and thinking, you know, I've got this idea, I've got this concept, never be afraid. People always ask me, you're not scared when you come up with these business ideas, when you launch a new product, are you not scared? And I think, you know, for me, living a kind of really boring nine to five would scare me. I never want to be in that position where I have to sit in rush hour traffic every day. That frightens me so much. But launching things, sharing something you're passionate about. If you've got a product or something you're making or creating that you absolutely love, if you can share that passion online with an audience, there is no way that they will not love it as much as you, just as long as you can convey that. You know, I really absolutely believe that if you've got something that you love so much, go for it. Do not sit there thinking, shall I do it next year? Shall I, you know, shall I quit my job to do this? Obviously there's always measured risk. And I think if there's a possibility for you to go part-time in your regular job so that you can focus on the thing that you are absolutely passionate about, then go for it that way. But, you know, people who sit there and say, I'm afraid I don't really want to do it. You do not want to get to 65 and retire in your existing job and think, do you know what if 20 years ago when I had that idea, I'd have pursued it? Um, yeah, what ifs are, are horribly scary. So I think absolutely go for it and build up step by step. You know, this didn't happen for me overnight. People always kind of view it as an overnight success because they see the end product. But my overnight success has so far taken eight years in this business alone. And before that, it was another business. And before that, it was another business. So an overnight success can be a lot longer than overnight. And again, you know, don't be afraid to start small and to scale it up gradually and to work with people who can help you do that. And uh, you, you talked there about taking risks. Do you have any plans to extend your business internationally? Oh, always. I mean, there are always plans. And I think, you know, for me, the USA and Australia, such big markets, um, America, especially in terms of diet, we here in the West do not eat the best diet at all. And so being able to help people worldwide to heal is, is amazing. And I think for me, having that American market, 
there are very definitely people out there who, who need me to help them um, and guide them towards healing their skin. And again, you know, having the opportunity to do that with fulfillment where that is possible and where I can get products to customers quickly is, is just fantastic. So America is going to be our big kind of focus over the next year, especially with Brexit making things increasingly difficult across Europe. America is most definitely going to be the big focus. Well, thanks very much for your time today, Hannah. A privilege as always uh, to have a conversation with you and to talk to your journey. Um, and fantastic that you know we get the opportunity to help businesses such as yours to scale up and grow. Uh, and wish you all the very best for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, James. Really appreciate it.